I know you're aware that there's a great deal of concern, maybe unhappiness, maybe even anger uh, over the rates that are presently being charged and projected for uh, water and sewer, driven largely by the watershed management's capital improvement program, which the present mayor uh, undertook uh, when she came into office right in the face of two federal consent decrees, uh, huge fines being paid, and a lack of prior interest in keeping up with rapid growth or keeping up with maintenance. Uh, from a standing start, watershed management has uh, had a great success in getting a lot of work done to include completing the 2007 consent decree and really reducing those fines for uh, sewage spills. However, Atlantans are now paying the highest rates among the uh, largest 15 water systems in the country with more projected over the next two years of significant increases. And in addition to that, that's really being held, held down by the fact that the taxpayers of Atlanta are paying 1% uh, sales tax directly into that same program. The uh, looking forward to the, next, to the upcoming program, 2010 to 2014, when the next mayor will uh, really have responsibility for most of it, there's another $1.5 billion of borrowing during that period to complete the effort um, with bond payback going back, going out into the 2040s and with roughly one third of the present watershed management budget already being consumed by uh, loan costs and the payback of loans. The auditors recently opined that uh, in their opinion, that the present just completed rate increase and the next two will uh, probably be excessive to the real requirements of watershed management. Watershed management strongly disagrees with that. Uh, my reviewing that audit, I didn't see where the auditors looked to see whether or not the present projects you know, in the CIP are required. So would you take a moment and Talk to us about how, as mayor, with all of the other things going on, you personally will find uh, yourself able to take a look and see in your own mind whether or not what's there is really needed and whether or not the costs now and into the future to the ratepayers uh, are the best that we can expect. Thank you for the question and thank you for the context. It's very helpful to have the uh, background information. What I would tell you in thinking about this question is, number one, this is an essential service, as I indicated in my opening statement. And so I will be primarily focused on all things that are required by the city charter, and this is one of them, providing water. But equally as important is the federal government mandating that we handle our consent decrees. Now, it is important to acknowledge that these consent decrees actually started under the for former mayor's administration, not this mayor's administration. But unfortunately, we did not plan adequately and we did not uh, figure out our debt service adequately before that mayor left office. So this mayor inherited, this administration and this council, inherited the sins of a former administration and inadequate planning and inadequate funds. So when we look at the rates, I think we have to be very clear with the facts that we started behind the eight ball. We had not been attentive to our water and sewer infrastructure for more than 40 years, nor had we been attentive even after the federal judge told us we needed to be. This mayor has stepped forward and transformed this community and put us on a platform for growth for the next generation so that we don't have these difficulties in the future. When I think about the rates, no one wants to pay high rates for anything, but water is an essential, and we have been mandated to get the infrastructure repaired, not make spills downstream. And so we have, in fact, responded appropriately and put our skin in the game along with the borrowing we did with the state's help and additional funds from the federal folks. So what I would say is we have done an extraordinary amount of work in a very short period of time since one of the uh, consent decrees has been finished ahead of schedule and under budget. The second will continue through 2014. 
So I will be deeply engaged, as I have been for the last five years, with the oversight that the council is uh, required to do to ensure even as even more so as the mayor and the chief executive that I receive reports on a regular basis. We need to institute performance metrics that we can measure against on a regular basis. The mayor and the commissioner, I think, in this instance, need to receive that information because it is such a critical situation for Atlanta's future and so that we do not waste any of the taxpayers' money, that every taxpayer gets the value for every investment dollar that we put into this system. Thank you. Uh, about 50% of the 2010 to 2014 program is the consent decree for 2014. That's correct. The other 50% uh, are other projects uh, that are deemed necessary, at least by those doing the planning. Once you have yourself certain that the program is what's needed, how can you bring that in a better way than perhaps is doing today to the understanding of the citizens? I think we have to, you know, we're often taught we should measure twice and then cut once. I think we need a review panel that would help uh, share with constituents all across the city what we're doing and how we're doing it. I'd like to see a panel of experts, which would include those who are in engineering and finance and sustainability and natural resources, help keep good, clear, additional eyes on the process for what we are doing. And we need to share that with our citizens. We need a, an even higher degree of transparency. A six-year-old needs to understand what we're doing. It's not that complicated. Maybe the financing structure is complicated, but it's not that complicated. It is not our personal money. It is our collective money. And see, we need to make sure that everyone understands why we're investing, how we're investing, and what the result is on the other end that they will get, in fact, for the investment that we have made. Let me, go, let me go back to the audit for a second All right. and change the subject just a little bit. All right. One of the findings, and one to, agreed to by, uh, at least by watershed management, uh, deals with the fact that within the city structure on the administrative side, there are multiple organizations that are involved in the procurement process. In the case of watershed management, it's watershed management, their procurement arm, Department of Procurement and Department of Law. The audit findings sort of say that the, that the boundaries and responsibilities among those varying departments are not clear mm -hmm. and that that has resulted in a lot of back and forth, a lot of delays in procurement that have increased expenditures. Um, that seems to me to be a mayor's responsibility to grab hold of that and to straighten it out among departments. How would you go about doing that? I think that's true no matter what department you're talking about, whether it's watershed management or some other uh, function of the city. We need to have very clear lines of responsibility, but we also need to understand that departments should not work in silos, which is often what happens not only in government but in the private sector as well. And so setting a clear vision for this is who you are and this is what you do and this is how you service a particular department or how you work in an integrated fashion, a collaborative fashion, is it starts at the top, setting a culture of cooperation, first of all, and a recognition that there has to be some uh, clear set of expectations for every department and for how they work with one another. So setting the tenor and the tone for how the administration works and how we govern and how we serve starts with the mayor's office. So it ser starts with me at the cabinet level talking with the commissioners, whether it be Watershed or any other department, about how they should cooperate and work together as a team, as opposed to individual departments and functions of government. 